Okay. I'm going to declare a quorum and call the Grand Utilities Commission slash Water Force Control Authority meeting for September 16, 2020 to quarter. Uh, the first item on the agenda is uh, roll call. All commissioners are present. Approval of the regular minutes. I need a motion to approve the regular minutes of August 19, 2020. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Both abstention motion carries. Treasury report. I need a motion to approve the Treasury report for August 20, August 2020. So uh, We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, a quick one on paragraph two. You have this on. Uh, you just want to point out maybe that I'm reading it wrong. The very last sentence where we're dealing with commercial sales and industrial sales. Up under the budget by 11.2. Is that bigger from last year? The um, I just opted in that page and passed out the um the Oh, you got a new page. page. Yeah. Got it. Never mind. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Eve. All right. Is there any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none. All in favor say aye. All right. Close. Abstention. Motion chair. Okay, communications and reports. We have emails regarding the WPCA. We have a new one on your desk this morning from Grant Weaver. We'll add that into the list. And if you want, if you guys want to talk about emails, we can, or my preference would be to wait until we get into old business about the KF voter update and just discuss everything together. Emails, actions that we've taken, uh, direction, way, uh, way ahead, direction we're going, those kinds of things, if that's successful to the commission. You guys okay? All right, then we'll do that. All right, public communications. In response to State of Connecticut Executive Order Number 7B, Protection of Public Health, and safety during COVID-19 pandemic and response further suspension and modification of statutes dated March 14, 2020, suspending in-person open meeting requirements. All public meetings will be close to the public at the time. Public meetings will be televised in real time on drop minutes for television channel two and online. If you wish to address the commission, please call 860-446-4130 during the public communications as part of the agenda. In addition, written communication is sent to the director's office and director at grunutilities.com by 9 a.m. on the day of the meeting will be read during the portion of the meeting. I have um, an email from Sam Spano of 300 Main Street, Grant Connecticut. There's been no improvement in owner situation since 8 19 20 utility commission meeting. The severity of the owners have actually gotten worse. Later days since the 819 meeting. Thursday, 820, Sunday, 830, Thursday, 93, Friday, 94, Saturday, 95, Sunday, 96, and Sunday, 930. They were all call in, called in the manager. Again, I suspect that there have been more other days than that documented above, but it depends on the wind direction. Also, I've been running my AC a lot, but it's been away a considerable period of time in both August and September. It needs to be noted that Thursday 820 and Saturday night were the worst days they since the problem. On Thursday 820 and approximately 455, there was a massive release of hydrogen sulfide gas from the WPC. The email span over the good day on 821.20. This went on for at least an hour. The sense that it is alarming since the gas, gas is both quite toxic and explosive. The smell of rotten egg permeated the neighborhood. This type of odor had not happened before. My body, my neighbor, Bonnie Geezer, also smelled her house in 25 Fort, which is some distance away. I know from speaking with her, she is both concerned and frightened by this. And she also told me she has also put in a complaint. I was not able to get a hold of the manager at the time of the incident due to confusion about who was actually on call that evening. 
The next morning, I got on the plant and talked to both Jim Bowdy and Joe Pratt. Both and I and the other had come from the plant. Mr. Pratt actually pointed the finger at the sewer lines. I am certain that this was not the case due to the intense magnitude of the odor and the fact that the wind was blowing right over the plant at the time. I know this because the flag over the plant was pointing in my direction during the incident. By the way, blaming the sewer lines is no excuse. I've heard this many times from GE personnel, including that the PCA is also responsible for the sewer lines and the new dioxide injection system is supposed to take care of many issues. I never received any explanation for the rotten egg sulfur odor from GE Manning. On Saturday 9 5, the other was a very bad raw sewage odor, perhaps methane gas. See the email spanner of the day, 9 7 20. This incident started about 2 59 p.m. and went on into the night. I first noticed it because it was so intense that it actually came in through my back screen door into my home office at the rear of my house. Usually, the odor comes through the front windows in my living room, which faces the plant. Manager on call, Rick Stevens, and I've operated the plant twice. But it did no good. It should be noted there has been, there had been the same odor on Thursday 9 3 and Friday 9 4, and then also Sunday 9 6, but to a lesser degree. On Saturday, I had to close all my windows and put the AC on for the rest of the day. I would also like to note that this time there has been some finger point that the odor may have come from the London plant across the river. This is not the first time I've heard this explanation. On well, Sunday, I took a trip over to London to find the actual location of my plant. The gate was open since the plant is banned 24 7. As a result, I was able to gain access to the plant and walk around. I understand this plant processes roughly, roughly five times the sewage of the ground. What I found that day was a clean and virtually odor free plant. I understand this plant is run by private contractors. I believe that this is a complete Fallacy if there's any intense order to make it across the river. For one thing, the plant directly borders for Trouble State Park. Any major order from the London plant will be shut down long before it crosses the river. I am certain that your wind will disperse any other long before it reached my house on the far ground back. I have heard that the permanent air monitor has finally been installed on the scrubber as of Monday night. Morning. Hopefully, this gives some reliable data as to what is coming out of the stack from here on out. Another thing in regards to scrubber, I would like a clear explanation as to whether or not chlorine tablets should be put in the scrubber on a regular scheduled basis or, or under control by the current operator. Now, she managed to clarify this because there seems to be some controversy about this procedure depending on the itself. So there are more than 14 months since the other problems began in July 2019. As can be seen, the situation is still out of control. Again, I thank the commissioners for your help in this. So that is the public comments. Any questions on public comments? Okay, we'll move on to regional order. Who's going to present regional order with me? Ray, Ray or Rick, do you have any updates to that? Also, if we could uh, hit the Pocotonic Cove crossing. There we go. Ray. Ray. Oh, the uh, Pocatonic Cove crossing is uh, we received the plans from the engineer, sent them to Norwich for their review and wait for their response. And then it will go to DEP and uh, EPA, uh, DEP and DOT, uh, Department of Transportation. Uh, I mean, DPH, sorry. And also, uh, then we'll be ready to go out the bid. So we have a few corrections, but I'm just waiting for Norwich to look at their plans. Okay. Anything else on regional water update? Well, there's no nothing else on regional water update, Mayor. Okay. Monthly financial balance. Um, first, I want to say sorry they uh, um, have their one page of the highlights first um, on the data we found we um, corrected it and um, did the page and uh, 
strong foot causes to um, come down on their desk. So we're going to look at um, for the initial um, the high net review. Um, first, we started with the electric division. So the revenue side, um, the electric revenue for the month of August is strictly over the budget and residential sales and industrial non manufacturing sales exceed the budget by 12.8% and 30.7% respectively. While the commercial sales and the industrial manufacturing sales are under budget by 9.8% and 5.8% respectively. So for a year today, um, the total electric revenue is 3.7% greater than budget and 3.2% more than the same period of last year. And and industrial non manufacturing sales over the budget by 10.6% and 19.7% uh, respectively. And the commercial sales and industrial manufacturing sales are below budget by 10%, 10.3% and 4.9% respectively. On the cooling degree days are 6% less than last August and uh, 9.6 percent measurement loss this year today. Um, this is the revenue overview and for operation maintenance expense. Operation maintenance expense for August are 30, 35.9 percent below the budget. And the um, favorable event is driven by the, um, we have for two storm war quarters. One for Baldra and one for the uh, Eversource. So this shows from World Quarter, which um, allocates by the total 933 regular um, hours to front operation management expense to the two World Quarters. And uh, also with the overhead allocation, um, the credit about like 128,000. So um, that's one of the um, reasons. Um, driven driving to the favorable bearings for the operation management for August. So the net income of uh, the month is likely as ninety seven percent more than the budget due to the below office below budget operation management. For um year to day, the uh, operation maintenance operation and management are um twenty four point seven below the budget. <laughs> And net income is 111, 113.3% more than the budget, also due to the below um, the budget operation and then the expense. Um, the um, debt cash on hand for electric is 116 days. And um, this is the overall for the um, electric division for the um, month and year today. Any questions? Any questions on electric? Okay, hearing none. Please spend a look. Okay. So, um, for water, the water revenue of the month um, is 5.7% 5. 5. more than the budget. Um, the sales to residential, industrial, and sales for resale is the budget by 7.3%, 9.4.9%, and 12.6%. Respectively, and uh, while the commercial sales are below the budget by um, by five point one percent, and the total revenue, water revenue, year to date is almost on target of the budget, um, and uh, uh, three point five percent more than the um, last six year to date. Residential sales and for resale exceeded the budget by six point six. Percent and 2.3 percent respectively, and while the commercial sales and industrial sales, sales are under budget by 8.5 percent and 1.2 percent. Um, so there's one thing um we put it here, and uh, uh, we have uh, bidding corrections on one of our um industrial customers, and we just figured out this month, and so. Um, this will impact the both the water and the steer division. So um, due to this feeding correction, um, the water revenue is reduced by 
46,000 for a total of July and August, and also the world reduced to the last week to the rhythm of by 216,000. And um, our, um, the air will have more information regarding the spinning corrections. Um, when we have more, uh, when we go to the, the new business um, section, so we'll have more information about the um, discussion of the business. Um, on this large customer. So, population management and defense and net income section. For the month of August, our patient management expense are 5.8 percent below net budget, and net income before the um, DWSI grant is 224,000 more than the budget. And the several variance is driven by the over budget revenue plus the um, under budget operation management expense and the delay of the EPH percent appointment project. For year to date, um, operation management expense are 10.2 percent of the budget. And you may earn in this for the DWSIF grant is 402,000 more than budget. Um, the updates for the water treatment project. So at the end of August, uh, 2020, total 45 um, million has been incurred for the, the water treatment plant project. And uh, uh, we already received 44 million from the state, um, including the 12 million for the uh, grant and the 32 million for um, the loan. And um, water, this cash on hand is 121 days. So this is overall for um, the water duration. And the um, any questions? Any questions on water? Okay. So uh, carrying on, go ahead and see. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, so revenue for the month is 14. 21% more than the budget. Residential and industrial sales is more than the budget by 7.1% and 20.6% um, is expected while the commercial sales are 250 under the budget. Year to day revenue um, for sewer is 6.5% more than the budget and the office is um, 6.5% more than the third of last year. This shows the residential um, and industry sales to be divided by 7.4% and 8% respectively, while the commercial sales are 1.9% under the budget. And um, this is the same thing that due to the same, um, the due to the same correction on the same industrial cost account, the pure revenue is reduced by 238000 for um, the total to night and August. And the 302,000 for um, the last 15 years. And operation management spends um, for the month are 23.4% below the budget, and the income is 138,000 more than the budget due to the over budget revenue and plus on the budget operation management spends. For 15 years to gain, there's um, operating and maintenance expense are 39.9% below the budget and net income is 239,000 more than the budget, which is the community is over budget revenue plus on the budget um, the operating maintenance expense. So net cash uh, for sure at end of August is 3.7 million. Um, this is the overall for the um, your division for the high, uh, financial high night. Our next question, first one. Yeah. Yes. The billing correction goes up on the uh, electric, I mean, the water, and, and now it's sewer. Can we address that? Um, what, we're, we're, did you adjust? We're going business? to address it. There's a large customer billing discussion on the new business. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the sewer revenue is based on the uh, water meter. So if, if the water, the, um, the meter 
issue that will be like the uh, impact to us at the same time. Is that, that is when we're going to discuss it? Absolutely. We have a presentation, I don't know a presentation, but yeah. a discussion on what happened, how we got there, yeah. and do we expect a uh, discussion. Okay, but so I, we'll go ahead and ask your questions. Yeah, on regarding the financial, sure. I didn't get a chance to go back on the ledge. Are you collecting the uh, year to date figures going forward in our, our current year report? Yeah, because currently we already mentioned this to our um, auditor, so they realized that uh, we're going to have this um, the revenue adjustment. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to correct last year since we already know this big adjustment. Right. So and uh, um, uh, also correct the June and August. So we will have a good number for the uh, comparison going forward in the future. So, so when you get the auditor figure, you come with a grade on that amount, you're correcting the Carry forward in our report. Correct. Okay. Yep. Good question. That's good. That's good. And, and we'll get into what happened and yep. the choices we had and, and the direction that we're going. And you'll, you will probably have a couple more questions as well as other commissioners. Anything else on financials? Okay, we'll move forward. The projects initiatives update, COVID 19 update. So good morning, Commission. Uh, so in the state of Connecticut uh, today, uh, th these are uh, hot off the press this morning. Um, related to COVID, there's been 4,485 uh, fatalities in the state of Connecticut. This morning, there's 71 uh, patients in the hospital. That's an uptick of 20 over the last uh, uh, two weeks. Um, only five of those people are east of the Connecticut River, though. Um, there happens to be four in New London County, one in Wyndham County, and zero in Holland County. So um, as, as far as COVID goes, uh, Southeast Connecticut remains the place to be in the state of Connecticut. Uh, the infectivity rate for the state has been uh, less than 1% for uh, almost 10 weeks. Uh, it did in the last two weeks rise over uh, just over 1%. I think it's right at about 1.4% uh, as of uh, this morning. Uh, still, uh, uh, you know, leading leading the nation, some of the best numbers in the country uh, in terms of COVID. Um, we continue our ground utilities continues our uh, COVID protocol. We have not changed any of that. That includes the enhanced cleaning, uh, the the periodic uh, or every other week uh, deep cleaning of the contractor and spraying of our uh, our facilities, including uh, over here in the municipal building. Um, the things that have changed recently is the travel protocol. So now there is a testing option uh, for uh, personnel that go out of state on vacation or work. They do not, you know, uh, necessarily have to quarantine, although that's the preferred method. There is a way to uh, test out of quarantine. Uh, and that just came out uh, yesterday or the day before. They went to, yeah. So there are a few other changes uh, that. The acting governor, Susan Bicewitz, uh, signed an executive order, uh, I believe it was yesterday, talking about the wearing of masks, uh, you know, being mandatory out in public, even outdoors, if you can't uh, be six feet apart, socially distance. So a few changes there. Uh, not much that impacts uh, Groton Utilities operation because we've been following these protocols, you know, right along. We have yet to have a case of COVID. Uh, in Groton Chili's, uh, which is good. Is that, is that people number of people we have it? Yes. Uh, we, uh, sometimes it's better to be lucky, I guess, smart. But uh, we have been, uh, you know, taking these protocols. We started in March when this thing kicked off. We, were, we actually were ahead of the, the state protocols, and eventually they, you know, they caught up and added some other things. Uh, so that, that's, all, that's all good on the, the COVID uh, front. For us. Anybody have any questions on COVID? Where, where do you get your source of information from? Can we go forward? Yeah, I checked. Uh, I uh, actually listen into the governor's briefings every afternoon, uh, when they're in the afternoon, um, and uh, check the uh, state website every morning to uh, check changes. 
And, and again, we, we are continuing to take attendance and run utilities to make sure uh, that everybody that is absent is the reason is reconciled and ensuring that we're doing the right thing uh, relative to actually any infectious disease, but right now, particularly COVID. And locally, we opened up this building last week. We're open Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Thanks, Wednesday. That's why the front door is more open. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, we go from nine to three. We have a reader. And we, my goal is to minimize the number of outside people that are having contact with staff. So the way that we're doing that, it's a layered approach, if you will. You put up a sign out there near the parking lot that TVC is not operating out of here anymore. So you can try to stop those guys before they get out of their vehicles. And then at the bottom of the steps, we have um, a, a placard that basically says, Grant Utilities is only accepting exact cash payments. So if it's a check or, or you can drop it in a mailbox, you can drop it in a drop box. We have uh, auto pay that we're testing now, and we also need to pay by phone. So there's several different ways, and that minimizes uh, the number of people going to customer service. And so uh, the report that I've gotten so far, we're, we're, we have controlled this, so we're maybe 20 people a day in the municipal building that either goes to the municipal side or to the utility. So we're doing everything that we can to minimize contact and to keep our employees safe, as well as the public but trying to keep the employees. Okay, uh, anything else on COVID-19? Okay, customer service accounts receivable. Tina? Uh, good morning. Um, so this is actually fresh off the press, um, which actually as of right now, we are sitting roughly about 10% um, with uh, delinquent as far as dollars go. Um, if I remove out all the um, medical customers um, with a, a, a extremely high balance, that actually drops by 1%. So we actually sit about 9%, which off the top of my head, I think we're about 3% better than we were um, last month, which is, which is good. Um, we are still consistently about 5% higher than we normally are. So um, we will start um, doing non-paid cuts on October 1st. So any customer that has a um, outstanding balance with no payment arrangement, um, that the shutoff date was prior to October 1st, um, will be eligible for shutoff. And then through the month of October, as the shutoff dates um, come up, that will be the billing cycle um, that um, we would actually shut off. We are calling all the customers in each cycle, um, um, trying to reach out um, emails, whatever we can to get the customers to contact us to try to get on some type of um, payment arrangement. Um, we've done some, um, pretty interesting things with a lot of the customers to help them get caught up on their bills. And um, that currently is, is the process that we are going. Um, I did reach out to a few starting October 1st um, to start to start to start interrupting for non-payment with customers that don't have um, payment arrangements. So does anybody have any questions? Tina. We chose yes. this because basically uh, it'll give us one month, one good solid month to catch up. We've been in um, communication with the customers throughout this entire period, trying to set up payment plans. Um, the thing that we're up against next was in November, Typically, a cement moratorium for shutoffs occur due to the cold weather. We've also worked with customers for heating assistance and those kind of things to try to help them uh, with those things. 
But uh, now that the deferred payments, which is what uh, the Grand Town Council uh, adopted, once that's over, then we will start collecting payments for the month of October. So you guys may get phone calls or comments or questions or, or whatever. And we're, we're gearing up in customer service. We expect it. And then also at the mayor's office, we're standing by in the event that we call. Um, and one one of the other things, just to kind of mention, um, I've reached out to um, APPA, our, and um, a couple of the, obviously the other um, public um, municipals and the private municipal and the private um, sector also, and kind of threw it out there on who's cutting and who's not cutting. Um, Connecticut is one of the few states that actually stopped interrupting service through this whole COVID process. Um, most states have continued to follow their state guidelines as far as if there's a moratorium, if there's a heat advisory, a cold advisory, but they have continued to interrupt um, service if customers are not making, make, making payment arrangements or not making payments on their account, account. So Connecticut is part of the few, not the many. Um, for interrupting um, services, which we have, we have stricter, uh, stricter guidelines. Um, um, Connecticut does than normal than a lot of the other states. Thank you, Tina. Anything else on this? Uh, nope, not at this time. Okay, uh, commissioners. Anything else from customer service? Nope. Okay, we're gonna move on to PCB phase two discussion. Um, do you want to leave that? I'll take this one for the moment. Okay. Um, uh, two months ago, I received a call from uh, the EPA uh, concerning the PCBs as it relates to the filtration plant. Uh, as everybody knows, I, first let's define phase one and phase two. Phase one of PCB removals is what's currently ongoing and has been approved by the EPA and is being completed with the filtration project that's ongoing, the current project. Um, I, I think we've talked about PCBs quite a bit in project updates and where we realize um, that the, the cost of that isn't uh, trivial. So um, beyond that, uh, the EPA said, well, geez, we've approved this phase one for you we'd like to open up a discussion with you with when you're going to finish because the EPA expects that um, they consider PCBs in uh, a material that is unauthorized for use. So if you have PCBs in paint on the painted walls, and if I misspeak, correct me, Mark, but um, if you have PCBs in the paint on the walls, they consider that uh, inappropriate, non-authorized use, and they expect you to take the PCBs off the walls and make sure that everybody's protected. So with that, uh, she goes, well, we realize that this isn't part of your current project. It's not current areas that you're working on, but since it has been identified, we really want you to get over the hump and commit to getting this done. Um, and she goes, so I asked her, I said, geez, will you give us a couple of weeks to determine internally what the magnitude of that is and see if we can come up with a plan? Um, because she goes, if, if you do not commit to get these done in the short range future, um, well, I want to create an agreement, a legal agreement with you to guarantee that you will at some point. Um, and as a general rule, you prefer not to enter into a legal agreement with the EPA. <laughs> um, so uh, we, we regrouped, we regrouped and uh, got the mayor's input also. Um, and I returned the phone call to her two weeks later and said that um, we, we'd like to move ahead and figure out exactly what these costs are going to be we will not be able to complete this, we don't believe, until you give us at least three more or four more fiscal years to do appropriate budgeting to get the work done. 
um, because we do not have specific quotes for the work yet, although we do believe we have order of magnitude quotes. Um, in any case, uh, it's, it'll be a financial decision. Um, the, the work that's ongoing now may be capitalized with the project or it may just be expense. The future work that wouldn't be tied to a project wouldn't have the option of being capitalized as part of a project. So um, the finance group is currently working on that. And that does make a difference on the cash flow uh, to the given years. Um, so with the EPA in my discussion, we said, well, we'll commit to budgeting uh, to get this done in the next fiscal year, which is fiscal year 22, 23, and 24. And we'll do our best to get this done. So that'll move us to, so she's looking at December of 2023. That would get us two fiscal years and into the third fiscal year for expenses to uh, go about uh, getting this work done. So uh, I just wanted to bring it up here because it'll be another project that you'll be following moving forward. Uh, we'll be budgeting for it. We'll be planning for it and budgeting for it. And actually uh, projects and operations will be working uh, with the EPA to get an approved plan before we hit the next budget year so that we can then uh, do the appropriate procurement process to get the services rendered so that over the next two and a half years after July 1st, we, we can hopefully get all the PCBs remediated uh, in the entire facility. Questions, comments? Cost, well, where is it right now that's left? Is it just in the paint? Or is there other PCB? No, it's, it's all paint. And uh, actually, it sounds worse than, it, than I believe it is because uh, 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 Ray and Mike Weber have worked, uh, done a great job with uh, R.H. White in the in the uh, abater AAIS, and everywhere that we need to access to operate the plant will be complete, uh, completely remediated before uh, we actually get there. So that that's good. So that means more of the remediation is actually taking part in this part of the project. Right? Phase one. Phase one. Right. So, so they, you know, how do we remediate? And what do they decide? They're 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 using uh, different methods, you know, peening, uh, chemical peel, um, grinding. I mean, they're using uh, hand capsule. Right, right. Yeah, we we lost that uh, we lost that uh, battle with the EPA because we we actually spent money on a couple of different experts that said it's better if we encapsulate the paint rather than take it off the wall. But so uh, we didn't we didn't win that uh, argument. Uh, so we are actually removing the, the paint. Um, actually, it's gone. Uh, it's gone pretty well. And I don't know, Ray, if you if you have comments, speak up. But uh, I think you know, Ray and Mike, uh, working with uh, RX White and the and the abating team, have done a good job in and in concert with our environmental partners there, uh, Paul Munez, uh, who's been invaluable in, in working on our relationship with the. With Kim Tisa at the EPA, so uh, that's gone well. We still have some negotiating to do. We, we uh, our commitment is to give them a plan by the end of the year. Try and get that approved by the end of this year, um, so that we can uh, get the formal bids. We do have kind of a stake in the ground because, as you know, six months ago when we were working through this, uh, again Ray and Mike Weber are working with uh, Paul Muniz went through every single space, every single room. In the water treatment, the old water treatment plant, and you know, did the the area measurements and got order of magnitude bids from the, the uh, abaters. So uh, you know, we kind of have a stake in the ground. We're narrowing that down. Uh, we we believe that there are some areas, not believe we know there's some areas in the old treatment plant that we can abandon and and literally weld the door shut and put a sign on it. And so we got some negotiating to do with EPA to see if they're going to, uh, you know, buy off on, you know, we're going to abandon that in place rather than have to spend money, uh, you know, remediating that because nobody's ever going to access that area again. 
Uh, so there's a little more give and take that's going to happen, but um, you know we're going to get there. Um, the soil pile has gone very well. I mentioned that at the last meeting. Um, it cost us extra money in sampling, which we're going to talk about later. But um, you know, if, if you go over there, you're going to see that soil being uh, reused, and the, the place is really starting to shape up. So uh, you know, again. Uh, a very tricky problem that we, you know, you grab a hold of and um, it's it's getting resolved. So, and these are are these unique to industrial buildings? What type of paint is that? I mean, yeah, in the uh, in the fifties, forties, fifties, sixties, uh, you know, PCBs is a is a uh, fire retardant. It also allows, I guess, the coating to flow more smoothly. I, I'm not a materials scientist, but that's what I understand. So, uh, you know, it, it's in all of these old buildings where they wanted a hard, durable, you know, coating on, you know, wall ceilings and decks. So there's, in, in my mind, there's a couple of big takeaways here. One. And it's very important we understand, but also that we get out to the public that the water that we produce for consumption never comes in contact with any PCB contaminated equipment, right? Because the water is inside the pipe, the PCB is in the paint of the structure of the building. So it's important that we get that out so that people understand that because they can very quickly you know, get all anxious about What's in my drinking water? And that's why it's discolored. Oh my God, you know, we have another plant and all that stuff, which, you know, is not true. The second thing is the PCBs associated with base are PCBs that are pre existing in the old plant, right? They're not new. The reason that we're having to uh, remediate PCBs. In, this, in, the, in the construction phase is because of the tie-in with the new plant to the old plant. And one of the things that Mark talked about is when you talk about remediation of hazards, you can engineer out the hazard, you can administer, put administrative controls, and then the final protection is PPE. There are rooms that we will no longer need to access. And one of the things that we're, we're trying to communicate with these guys, and I don't know how receptive they are to this, but we may need to, it may, 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 may mean a finesse, a finesse discussion. But if we're not going to, if we're never going to need to go, if we're never going to access that room, it says spend all that money remediated, why don't we put that money aside for the demolition, demolition later on? Because eventually you're going to have to deal with it. But if people aren't going to be exposed to it, then we just weld the door shut. And if you weld it, there's definitely no access. And then we can also have administrative controls so that you have a, a, a some kind of a document, a protocol that says if entry is required, here's what you're going to have to do. So if we end up welding this, welding it shut, get permission, you're going to have um, confined space entry. You, know, you can have other stuff you're going to have to deal with besides. The PCB. We also have a PCB plan at the PAF. That was, you know, PCBs were identified during some projects several years ago, and uh, we have a PCB plan for approval for the PCB there. Another part of this is what what was the number the 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 cost the top number of round two. The, the, the yes. Okay, so we're talking about $2 million over a period of uh, two and a half, three years-ish kind of thing. So my question was, okay, if we're spending money on remediation, the market market brought this up, what projects are we now not going to do? Right? And then how do you pay for this? And we don't, we're not going to be able to get bond money for, remi for PCB remediation. So that's going to have to come out of out of either cash or, or how we're going to fund it, maybe O and M or, or whatever we're going to do. And then, if there's other capital projects, because we still have 
capital projects is water water treatment, uh, not just water treatment plants, but piping and things like that that need to get done. And we may end up having to capitalize those through bonds. Is that accurate? Okay. So, you know, trying to tie all this in together, we're going to remediate. There's going to be a cost for that. We have a plan. How are we going to pay for it? And then we also have a plan so that we don't get uh, behind in, in keeping the uh, uh, keeping our infrastructure. Because that's also so is that what I said accurate? Yes. Okay. Any other questions on this? Okay. Do you see any report? Um, on page 35 of the package, um, this is a requirement of the charter. It's just a summary of all the divisions. It's put together every year. Um, if you're reading something in that pat in that write-up that's shocking to you, um, we didn't communicate well to you during the year. <laughs> so, um, if there's any questions to that. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So, is there any other new business that we use? No, not new. Business. Sorry. Any other? <laughs> My apologies. Any other projects, initiatives that you'd like to discuss, Ray? Ray, we happen to leave out the filtration plant. Um, if if you want to give the commission an update on that. Uh, up, okay. Uh, on the treatment plant itself, we are uh, we had Leopold, the people that supplied the TAF uh, material and did the programming down last week to fix some issues. Uh, we've been testing. We are hopefully uh, going live next week, uh, a week or two. If everything goes right, we're waiting for uh, confirmation to get Leopold back from the contractor. So uh, we are, we're getting very close to getting that side on. The demo of unit two is, is ongoing. We are uh, spreading loom, which is a good spot and uh, making the wall and fixing everything up. We're doing the uh, window removals and uh, putting up the outside skin of the, uh, around the old part of the plant. So we're, we're moving forward. Yeah, so the big part of that is uh, there should be water going through the new DAS to the system potentially next week. <laughs> That's a big deal. That'll be good. Any questions or comments on that? Okay, we'll move to old business BAF other update. Well, let's just we'll lump this all together. The emails, the uh, other update, the change in status since last time, the, what we're doing, where we're going, what we know. Okay, we'll start with uh, start with the uh, emails or that address kind of Sam's concern here. So uh, you know, Sam has has called uh, the uh, water treatment management folks uh, uh, a number of times over the last uh, month. Uh, we have dispatched uh, the on call person to go in and check the plant. Uh, we continue not to find issues when we go into the plant. Um, uh, so we're still struggling with that. So, uh, uh, but uh, we are checking out every time he calls, you know, trying to correlate odor and wind direction and, uh, you know, flow out of the scrubber. Um, and we've not found anything. So we did, uh, Sam also questioned uh, us a week or two ago about the scrubber operation. Uh, we did verify, uh, in fact, that Joe, Joe Pratt, in fact, Ron and I and the mayor and Joe Pratt had a, had a walk through the plant and walk through some issues. And uh, Joe confirmed that, you know, the, uh, that uh, we continue to operate the scrubber as we always have, putting the, the chlorine tablets in there. Uh, and we continue to have no detectable hydrogen sulfide coming out of the scrubber. Uh, what we did on the scrubber is, um, I had them add a continuous stack monitor uh, in the flow. 
uh, that is operational. Uh, and we've detected no hydrogen sulfide as of yet, uh, even with continuous stack monitors. We are adding uh, the stack monitor to our uh, SCADA circuits uh, so they can be remotely monitored and continuously tracked. In addition to that, we're adding a new weather station uh, with continuous uh, weather monitoring, continuous readout. Again, and it'll be on the same screen so that you can see wind direction and the hydrogen sulfide con concentration, if any, uh, coming out of the scrubber. Uh, so, um, and, and again, we haven't seen anything, uh, but we're you know, improving the technology uh, in, the, in the off chance that something is getting by uh, when we're not looking at it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, to, uh, to Rick Stevens' credit, uh, he, uh, he asked DEP to come down and do an ad hoc inspection of the plant uh, because uh, you know we told him we had a customer uh, or a resident that was having issues with the way we operate the plant, and we said, "Come on down, check us out, see if you can find anything that we're not doing correct." Uh, that was done uh, on Monday. Uh, we already have a report back, uh, a, a draft email back, rather. We don't have the full report. Uh, the full report will go to the mayor, but uh, the inspector uh, spent four hours and found no deficiencies in the way we operate the plant. Uh, and also found no odors other than, you know, the earthy odor when you walk in the doors of the, you know, the flood rooms and things like that. Uh, so, um, we're, you know, we're, we're scrambling to find data that helps us, uh, uh, you know, figure out where this is coming from. Uh, so far, we, we still don't believe it's coming from our plant. That's the bottom line. We are taking additional steps uh, above and beyond. Uh, there's a company that makes uh, uh, carbon uh, filter inserts that go into the covers of the manholes. The manholes you see in the street have those holes in them. Uh, we're actually putting carbon fil filters in those that uh, uh, last about six months. And then we'll change them out. We get enough to uh, try. Uh, we get a delivery of those tomorrow, and we're going to do that along Thames Street. Again, trying to do everything we can to be proactive and responsive to uh, Mr. Spano's concerns. Um, we'll see if that helps. Um, one big thing uh, we are doing, uh, the we asked for uh, an engineering firm to come in and do a complete assessment of the, of the PAF from an engineering standpoint, look at processes, facilities, uh, you know, even look at covering the thing, relocating the thing, uh, a big engineering study. And those bids are in. Uh, Rick Gray and their crew are looking through the bids and uh, we'll be awarding a, a, you know, a contract to do that We'll be coming to you to ask for approval to do that here probably the next meeting once we decide what the vendor is. Right, I think that's the process. Okay. So, uh, a couple of little other things down there. Uh, we, when we on our walk down last week, uh, we noticed that the, the, uh, the dumpster it gets the uh, the screen cleanings um, was uh, had some holes in it, so. Uh, there, you know, locally, if you stand beside that dumpster, there's an odor, but, you know, you get 10 feet away, you can't smell anything, but we, uh, we asked them to replace that so we dumpsters on order uh, to make sure that no odors escaping uh, the area from that piece of equipment. Uh, let me see. Oh, the other thing that we uh, were working with Tina to do uh, is to have uh, all SANS calls. Uh, we, we have to talk to Mr. Spano and, and ask him to work through customer service so that all his calls are tracked, recorded, uh, and appropriately triaged and sent out to the right, uh, right people. But it'll be on record that, you know, in the official uh, customer records that uh, he called in and had an issue. So um, we, we're going to take that action here uh, by the end of this week and, and uh, make that happen as well. So I think as far as the, the PAF, um, you know, we've done the Avoca, we've done the assessment, we had Hazen and Sawyer in, we've worked off their checklist of things for us to do. Uh, now we're gonna go look, you know, even, even deeper from an engineering standpoint 
uh, you know, much deeper, much broader study, uh, including, you know, eliminating that plant, uh, relocating it, covering it. That will all be answered in this engineering study. Uh, but I think, you know, we're trying to do the right by our citizens here. Um, and uh, certainly, um, we're being, uh, I think, very responsive, even though sometimes it doesn't seem uh, you know, somebody's smelling something and we can't find it. I, you know, I understand. I understand the concern and issue, but you say on all the calls where we've come in, we could not didn't find the smell. That's correct. I had I had a meeting uh, last week where I asked Mark and Ron and Ron Uhas and. Uh, Joe Bratt, the DP down to PAF. I walked the perimeter of the PAF, inside and outside, walked over the storage tanks, walked over the collection tanks, and I didn't smell anything that was, I didn't smell anything. You have some little odors depending on where you go, but nothing in the street. I was just pinpointing, trying to find a location to source. The one thing that Mark talked about in the waste container. Uh, I did see sell something there, but like Mark said, you're five or ten feet away from that, it's gone. Uh, I talked to Joe about the operation and what we're doing. There's things that we've done since then. With the, we have the scrubber now going on. We're going to get the sensor, the sensors in now. We're going to monitor that. We're going to get a new uh, weather station to monitor where wind direction is coming from. Uh, it has been, it is, and he's talk to me about the tablets that he puts in. He puts in the tablets. Part of the problem is that Mr. Spano is going to anybody and everybody to try to get information. So Sam, if you're doing that, you need to stop. You need a single point of contact that you're going to, and then we will work with it. One of the things we're going to do now is the, the this call the emergency number and all that. There was confusion that he was unhappy because he didn't feel like he got the customer service he needed. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go to one phone number. He's going to go to customer service, like everybody else. He was getting special treatment. He gets treated like we treat citizen A, like we treat citizen B. You have some correspondence in here about that. You got two more emails. Both those emails were solicited by Sam because we made a comment nobody else would say. So he said, okay, I'll get somebody to say something. That's my opinion. We hear it, we got it, I understand it, but if you're out there, I, there are other neighbors down there that are very quick to let me know when the city is not, and the utility is not doing things, and I have not heard a single word from them. This appears to be an isolated incident. I do not know why. I went down there. I did not have any issues down there when I first came on board as a counselor. The first place that I toured was the PAF. And back then, the metal the metal grates that, uh, that cover the wells, they didn't all seat. There were gaps. And there were no issues then. They're, they're now all seated. So we're doing everything we're supposed to do. And then you get somebody that writes an email, oh my God, I'm worried we're gonna blow up. We're not gonna blow up. It's not Bhopal, it's not anything else where these gases are going to explode and blow up the neighborhood. But some people grab on to things and instead of talking to us and letting us talk to them and explain what's going on, they don't want to listen. And I understand that, that serve right, and uh, they will probably express concerns on social media. And I'm, and I'm okay with that as well. We have done everything that we could do to abate this. We're still looking to get better. Nobody wants to, if you drive down toward electric boat, there are some spells coming out of electric boat. The, I'm not blaming this on electric boat. What I am saying is that the construction that is going on our electric boat has disrupted some of the ground underneath with the explosions and the driving of the piles and those kinds of things that they're doing. We have had odors at the beach this year that we've never had before. And a part of that is because 
is we're in a drought. Everybody knows we're in a drought. The, the Money County is in a drought one condition. Uh, and the lower counties are in a drought one condition, the upper counties are in a drought two condition. But what the drought does is the water, the ponds over by Yukon every point and other places, they are now mud plants and they're actually growing grasses. You have deer out there frolicking in the grasses. And so what happens is that water, that water barrier is now gone and there's dirt that's being exposed that now brings new smells. And so this has been a crazy year this year. We've seen an increase in a couple places. People are complaining about rats. Part of that is because they don't have a food source because the restaurants are closed out. So now they're looking for, for food. So you got the rats. We have triple E over in West Road. We have rabid bats and lime old lime down there. So there's a lot going on this year. And there's a lot of things going on here. And we have done everything that we can. We've had engineering studies. The guys come in and say, you're going to need DEP come in for a, a basically a pop-up inspection to come in to see how we're doing. And they said, we're doing everything that we can do. They don't have any issues. So I think we're doing everything that we can possibly do. And uh, that's the situation. We have, have we reached out to Lesley yet? Yes, yes. I talked to, I, I sent an email and made a phone call left a message for Steve. Steve Mansfield. Steve Mansfield, and he yeah. had uh, Wendy call me back, and uh, okay. they've had no issues, no complaints. Uh, they were going to think about it and see if there's anything else they can uh, recommend that we do, but that yeah. was. Uh, I'm inviting Blaze Light or my local health district to get involved uh, because if it's as god awful bad as everybody says it's god awful bad, then let's get the Blaze Light health district here. You have them to come in. And so far, they're saying we're okay too. Yeah. So uh, I don't know of anybody else to call, uh, but we are looking at this and we're evaluating this and we're. We are operating the plant in accordance with the requirements and in accordance with specs. Um, you know, one of the things that's in our packet, if you look at the nitrogen credits, we are, we're still um, removing the nitrogen to the point of where we'll get a check back at the end of the year, more in complications. So the plant is still running efficiently um, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. So that's, that's my take on this, but I'll open it up to the commissioners that you guys can talk to. Commissioner, go ahead. It seems like everybody, from the mayor, the management, plant operators, on down, the panel was backwards to resolve this over this long period of time. You've checked the inside the plant, you've checked all the equipment, you've checked everything outside the building, on the plant. Does anyone ever on the street and something like this sat and stay in the backyard and say, is it here? Or walk around the street with us. Are we reaching outside the perimeter of the plant itself to figure out? Yes. Are, uh, are our people detecting it? We, we've actually had uh, uh, odor loggers and detectors on Sam's property. I believe Ray, correct me, but I think we've actually had them up on his porch. You're like, Yes, we yeah. put them on the porch, and we even had uh, Mr. Care Quality come down and put something on there, a, a monitor. Right, and it's part of the Hayden and Sawyer uh, uh, review uh, from a couple months ago. They they had us go, you know, up the street, and you know, every day when Joe Brett comes in or somebody from the plant comes in, they you know they monitor at the same location. They do a sniff check, right, up the street and down the street. Uh, you know, several different locations, you know, looking for things that are leaking out of there, but we have not found any. And, and when we put those monitors in, we didn't identify anything about spec, right? That's in, in most cases, it was non detectable. <clears throat> non -detectable. Okay. So, we, we did identify, go ahead. we did identify uh, uh, trucks going by and we actually did get the CO2 levels and stuff from the trucks that they went by. So the, the monitors 
seem to be working and be fairly sensitive. Yeah. Now there are evolutions that are that will produce noxious odors, but there are things we do to mitigate them. For example, when Centigro comes in uh, to get the biosolids, then that is an evolution that is odor producing. But we do there are some things that we're doing now to mitigate that. Right, we mitigate that by using a vent, actually a suction hose that uh, as as the truck fills up, you know we we. As the air gets this place, we suck that air back into the plant through the through the scrubbing system. So, you know, but the other thing is uh, the plant operators, uh, you know, are pretty proactive when there's a known evolution, a known overcrowding evolution. They they uh, either text or call Mr. Spano. Again, we we're trying. You know, I know we're not perfect, but we're trying. Well, and, and you know, one of the things that the operators need to hear from us is that we recognize what they're doing. We recognize this is not them. I mean, part of the challenge here is keeping employing morale on them because, you know, it's almost a constant thing, just like on a rebound. It's like the bat phone. Hey, I don't like it again. I smell it again. Oh, I'm not happy again. Right? And this is their job. This is what they do for a living. And to hear that uh, they're not meeting somebody's expectation, you know, you hear that enough. You start to believe it yourself, right? But the employees are doing they're doing a bang up job down there and they're operating the plant like they're supposed to. So but the mission of the employees will be a lot of the health. Yeah. Fine as it would be to take their dump kind of night flush all the system. So you know, in the public, if they were awake at the time of the evening. You could track it on the way down to the plant. That's what Pfizer put in their filtration plan. They put it was the result of the fetish on how it would be done. Yeah. I mean, they don't have the same number of population in the state of operation. So I'm wondering if maybe an accumulation somehow between the two are two feet industry versions. Showing up at our front door outside our plant, we don't know about. Um, I don't know how you get to that. Um, Why are they maybe been contacting their steward plant operators out there? And Pfizer's tied into this. Yeah, they tied back in. Um, yeah, that's what it is. I don't know of any, any independent. Operation can be, I don't know. We, we, we do have contact with both Pfizer and Electric, both that, you know, Joe Fred and Ray Valentini talked to. You know, when I mean, these guys are pretty well connected in terms of sure. how they communicate because one system impacts the other. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? I'm good. I think you're doing a good job staying on top of it. And I I ride a bike almost daily. Many times I go up and down Fane Street. With this in, in mind, I've never smelled it, which I find amazing. But um, so I've gone by there many, many times. I, I've never smelled had the odor. Okay. Anything else? All right. We'll move on to the 2020 Neighborhood Assistance Act. I think is Dan going to speak to this? Dan? Yeah. All right. Um, so, being um, Father Light Power and I think made their determination of who's receiving the funding uh, for the Neighborhood Assistance Act for uh, 2020. Um, and going through the list, we had a lot of people, uh, a lot of nonprofits, apply this year um, from inside our service territory, outside our service territory. So we made a point of uh, stressing to work within our service territory uh, to keep with projects that were energy conservation projects and um, also prioritize nonprofits who have reached out to us and, and made an effort. So uh, with that in mind, what we determined for our funding this year is uh, the Fairview uh, Fellow Home uh, in Rockland for $93,749. 
for their confirmation projects that are falling out. And that would be coming from Bob and Lightning Tower. Um, from Brown Utilities, it would be the Avery Cobb Museum. I have an Avery Cobb House Museum for 60,400, which is their full amount. Bill Memorial Library for 19,525, which is their full amount. And Sacred Heart School, partial amount of 68,075. Also, I just want to point out, you know, pointed out to me, um, that we need to give credit to our finance group and E and, and everybody else because this is not an easy process. If this wasn't an easy process, everybody would be doing it, but not a lot of people, not a lot of companies are doing it. We kind of feel we ought to be doing it. It's important to do it, but it's not simple. And there's a lot of work that goes into it, that has gone into it, and will be going into it to finish it off. Um, I'm the only who hands out the check and, and uh, communicates and emails, and I get a lot of thank yous, but it really, it really is. So I want to make sure that that was known. Well, thank you all for those. Thank you for everybody involved in making this happen. This is a big deal. And this is one of the reasons you have a, a municipal electric utility, is to give back to the community. And this is one of the good things I think that we do, and we need to continue to take credit for. But for those of you that are involved in making this happen, thank you very much. Is there anything else? It's a wonderful program. It is. Quite a lot. They submit the power amount of the programs. Our total maximum is it our taxes that we paid to the state of Connecticut? I believe the program was about 150. So each business um, maximum we can contribute 150,000 dollars around the state of Congo. So this is the first step the uh, organization that we should submit the project to the state for approval the um, approve the project. Then after that um approved the they will um the all this nonprofit organization they will go uh, for the business to look for the contributions like we are the one of them. So we need to submit uh, our form to the state for the tax credit approval. Each business and we allow to contribute up to 150,000 from the tax credit. And, and the state may reduce that 150 down based on the number of people that are applying. So that so even though we're capped at the 150, mm -hmm. a lot of people put into that program they can reduce our sure. Yeah, Matt. Oh. Uh, also, Ruth. And Basra asked that we not do the entire 150 because of cash flow issues. So that's why they're uh, only doing 93,000 ish to odd fellow. Uh, additionally, this will go to the Basra Utility Commission meeting uh, because there are commissioners there that um, have concerns about where the money, money goes. I assume we haven't had any applications from Basra. There, there were no applications from Basra this year. And there were commissioners from Basra uh, that solicited every single eligible 503B. There are no approved uh, applicants from the Basra Rodney County. <clears throat> there were applicants. But weren't applied or didn't qualify? From what we understand, there was. Um, one nonprofit that applied but did not get approved by the state. We work out with the state approval. Yeah. Right, so it's up to the state to approve. Yes. Yeah. Right. 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 So, so yeah. most of them get money to be approved. Okay. Anything else? Anything else on that? Okay. We're going to move on to new business. I have a couple of questions on old business. Okay, I'm sorry. Just, just a some update. Uh, Thanks to traffic lights. I haven't seen any action. Uh, no, yeah. That stand. Oh, sorry. Uh, so we just had a meeting on those traffic lights. We're ready to uh, actually go after. I think Steve Shop told me we're ready to go after two of them. We put in the uh, the pedestrian pedestals on two places, and uh, we have we have the equipment. It's a matter of getting out there and finishing the roof. Okay. Um, Avery Point street lights, I, what I see over here, I found over here where you started them. Yes. Have they actually been any installed? Or? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, a couple of dozen already. <clears throat> okay. 
Yeah, the last number I had was 30 on those. Uh, we had a couple jobs that ended up pulling us off, like the Regency Hotel and some other things for the storm. So, but last number I had was 30. It must be very similar to the old ones because I haven't noticed any up there. So, yes, yeah, they, they are. You know, we tried to make them yeah. match as close as we could. Yeah, so uh, just to give you a heads up on that, so we, we have a storage container there. They're being pre staged and assembled. And then we're doing a swap out and changing out some of the some of the wiring in the guts, the fuse holders, et cetera, to make sure that we don't have to re revisit these for another, say, 20 years or so. That's the plan. So there was a uh, damage, uh, bad underground cable on Thomas Road. Was that ever repaired? On Thomas Road. On the AV point feeder. It's on the list. It's on the list? It was not repaired, correct. It's on the list. Okay, what's right. that mean? It's on the list to be done, I'm assuming that means. Yeah, well, what does that mean? Because, because I'm not aware of that issue. We we are famous for putting stuff on the list and it never get executed. So what does that mean? Give me a date. I, I'll give you a date uh, on Monday. Okay. So that, that went about a year ago? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, so the, the configuration of the system's out of right. normal. I'm not aware of that one. All right. Speaking of on the list, uh, on the list. Sewer, sewer pipe on uh, Lynn Avenue. I think I finally, I see something in this report that has started some engineering on that. Because I've been here three years and it's been in every report. Okay. Yeah, the plan is to uh, complete the engineering uh, this winter, and if funds are available to do the work, um, to schedule the work, it'll be done by an outside contractor, uh, and no part of that will be uh, bypassing. Okay. Well, uh, that's not an action item, right? No, let's record. There's, there's a list of critical projects and there have been in the director's yeah. report for um, about a year or so. Well, if they're critical and they're a year old, how critical are they? This gets back, this gets back to my thing about we got a list yeah. and we come up with things and we say and things break and we're not following up with it. Right? This, this, this collapsed sewer thing is... is yeah. Several years old, we need to get our arms around them. So, I mean, if we got outstanding issues that aren't 100% right, we need to get them, we need to get our arms around them. And if Mark doesn't know about them, that's not good either. So, we'll get him up to speed. George, you got anything else on your list? Uh, I don't know if this is, this is probably new business, the new service TB for the new building. Is that under engineering design or? Yes, uh, we, we, uh, we're actually meeting every two weeks with uh, EB to go through that. The, uh, uh, we're looking at getting the final design uh, reviewed by BHI's professional engineering people mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, we're in good shape there. Uh, we are talking to the, our, our union line force to see we're going to get the commitment to uh, have them come in and work that job from start to finish by tens. Uh, if not, we're going to outsource it. Um, and we are uh, working uh, with the uh, residents along the path. Uh, we just uh, were able to get, we, there was a particular tree on Nichol, Nicholas Street. Nicholas. Nicholas uh, Ave. And uh, we. Hold on, hold on a second. You know where to go. Okay. So let me bring everybody up to speed on where George is, and then I'll bring George up to speed on where I can bring everybody up to speed on where I am. What uh, Commissioner Scully is talking about is there's going to be a transformer station down on electric boat in support of the new 600 building and the coach building and those buildings that are down. The, it's going to have a dual feed. Those feeds are going to come, the one feed is going to come down Rainville. And just before it gets to Eastern Point Road, across from the, the uh, fire station, 
it's going to take a 90 and cut into the parking lot about halfway, and then it's going to do another 90, come across the road, Eastern Point Road, and then go down along Eastern Point Road to tie into the substation. The secondary one, this is what you don't know, uh, is it's going to come from Benham down Nicholas. So they're going to replace the poles, turn poles around 40, 45. These poles, the new poles are going to be 50, 55, 60, somewhere along in there. And so we're reaching out to the residents there because I had a meeting with Electric Boat because my concern is Electric Boat is not real good about communicating what's going on. And so my question to them is, are you going to communicate to the residents or do you expect the utility as the contractor to communicate with somebody needs to tell them what's going on? Right, because we're going to yank old poles. Actually, we'll put the new poles in beside the old poles and take the old poles out later. And then the poles are taller, and we're also going to go to the diamond shape, right, because of the voltage. It's a much higher voltage, and that's why they're going to go. So, it's, so visually, if you look it up, you're going to be, wow, that's really interesting. And now we're going through a residential area, and it's just another thing that they got to deal with because of the construction of the Indian. So, AB <clears throat> said, well, we really don't have that air communication. It's fine. Then we'll take it on. Uh, I've talked to Mark and, and uh, Bruce and the group. And so we're going to take it on to talk to the residents, make sure the residents know what's going on uh, so that they feel comfortable about it because I can't depend that somebody else is going to do that. And in the end, we're the one that's going to get the egg on our face and not the Right? So, I mean, we, the utility in some cases, but the mayor's office in a lot of cases has had to deal with, uh, you know, deal with the aftermath of the state side. They're just going to come in and start going and overland at night, right? The construction of the 600 building with the drilling of the uh, for the piles and the noise and the going to, to two o'clock in the morning and then uh, the dirt piles, everything else. Electric boat is not communicating that better. We're responding to emails after I go to electric boat to what else going on. And then we're communicating. Now I did have a meeting with electric boat on Friday and said, look, you guys need to do your own medicine here. I'm carrying your water and I'm not your PR farm. You guys need to get ahead of these. So they they said they would take that on board um, and you know try to at least move some things, but they're very close to what they want to let loose and those kind of things. But I had a guy come to me Wednesday and said, I need you to I need you to sign this authorization, this permit for DEP. And I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna sign that until I talk to you know my staff, and then I called Carl and they asked, Are you aware of this? Nope, didn't know. So when did you know? Well, we knew two months ago. Well, you knew two months ago, why aren't you telling me? Or you said, I can't talk about it. And I said, well, I'm not signing anything until it goes, and then maybe it's got to go to a commission. Because luck would have it, our management commission, which it had to go to, met on Thursday. So he was very fortunate that it was going to push him out a month. Right? And he said, oh, you can't push out a month. There's cost and schedule. Well, it's not my problem, right? So we're having to be extremely flexible in some cases when it's other people's lack of planning. And so I'm, I'm taking a harder stance on that and say, you know what? Nope, you gotta get it to, you gotta give us enough time to respond. So. Nicholas, yes, on Benham. Tap, yes. tap the line on Benham. Yes. Oh. Um, I did, one thing that came to my mind was EMFs on a residential road. Um, probably do EMF testing before and after. It, space or cables heavily insulated it shouldn't be an issue. Shouldn't be an issue, right? Um, 
We'll, we'll check it out though as part of the engineering design work. Yeah. Yep. So make sure that gets addressed. Okay. Anything else? I think I'm done. Any, anybody else on all this? No, it's good. It's good uh, you know, get your arms around cats and dogs, bring them in. Okay, new business. Large customer building discussion. Aaron, that would be you. Uh, good morning. So in actually March of this past year, a green error did occur on one of our industrial water meters. Uh, due to coincidental circumstances, that read was allowed to propagate through and compounded upon itself for six months until basically until August when we discovered the error. This created an overbilling of about 11 million cubic feet of water to the customer for $350,000 for water and uh, $590,000 for sewer. Uh, what kind of two important things to really note about this is it was not a meter failure. There's nothing wrong with a meter. This was human error on the read. Um, and that's it. Nothing was wrong with the meter itself. The other thing is this has no impact on the customer's sewer production. So those weren't impacted at all. In uh, short-term corrective action, we went through and labeled or relabeled the touch pads for these water meters. And we're also running a test trial uh, to see if we can import those reads automatically through the a handheld device that will sync up the meter ID with the transmitter number. In the long run, GU continues our changeover program of these older meters to the Neptunes, which allow the drive-by system and enhanced analytics. And so forth. Um, so, is there any questions? All right. So, a couple of things. This is human error, and one of the questions I asked is, okay, how many more human errors we got out there hanging out, right? Because we're going to automatic reads, we're going to the AMIs. and the Neptunes and those kind of things. That's what we're doing with our with our metering system. We, in, uh, you, uh, sorry, GU is looking at it. They're evaluating for the one off star where we could have uh, failure from that. Basically, it was there's two meters, they, the meter numbers got crossed, and it was an error carried forward. So, and then actually, it was identified. We, we identified it, right? We internally identified it. We work collaboratively with the customer okay. to identify the error. And it was it was one meter, it just happened there's a 10 inch side and a two inch side. Right. So there are different rates. Um, that's the that's the uh, the challenge. And so then the other thing is, all right, how do you pay it back? Do you pay it back incrementally or do you just pay it back all on one side? We we decided to go on all on one, one side, right? We let we let the customer decide. Okay. Yeah. So again, working with the customer, they elected to actually take the credit over the course of the next six months. Okay. Uh, that's their their profit. Now we are also we're going back to Commissioner Zoliani's point. We need because it because this occurred over fiscal years. We had to go and make sure that the books are corrected for twenty. Uh, for yeah, for last year and then for this year. So and uh, finance is doing it. I mean they've already started doing that. But that and you may, Commissioner you may have other questions no. associated with that as a result. But but it was something that you know when I was briefed on it, they said here's our plan for how we're going to take care of it financially. At the time that they briefed me. They had not received the decision yet from the customer. Now we have a decision from the customer on how they want to take payments. Uh, because, you know, basically you're talking to me about what's on my, even to a large customer. So, uh, but we have some lessons learned from it. We're carrying them forward so that uh, we're also boundarying this to make sure that we don't have any other instances with this, identifying that. And then we're moving forward, and, and I think we'll be. Stronger at the end of this once this comes out. Once we're done, I put around to the auditors and work with the finance department. 
So we all figure out, you know, once you come up with a figure, uh, my concern would be if we're looking at financial, our, our figures, in, in the event that we find a future final figure, we were close to that as a monthly um, year to date and last year's figures. But, so we've got an equal comparison for our figures. It's correct, that's why we are doing that now. Oh, you mean by the current center? No, but well, we're just incorporating the, the year to date. Okay, got it. I understand each month is basically the same. Yes. So, but we're going to compare last year's month to this year's month. Yep, correct. Not that I judge it. That's true. You're right. Yeah, that, it, it, they are going back and doing all that. Plus, I wanted to make one more comment. Um, there was a lot of concern in billing. Billing does their due diligence every month, um, and that department took this very personal. Um, and they made sure they got together with operations and everybody, and they really did their due diligence on this to go through the process. So they've identified how the view and error occurred, and they stopped the protocol so that it won't happen again. Is that so uh, I convened a root cause analysis, and we met uh, last Thursday for or Wednesday for two and a half, three hours to take a look at all of the uh, you know the events and kind of write the timeline about what happened, um, determine how to prevent recurrence. Right. So there there's a, a number of things that happen. Uh, it starts with. An individual reading the meter or the electronic readout of the meter, because in this case the meter is down in the pit. So there's a, a remote readout. So that person reads it and actually plugs that number, a seven digit number, usually an eight, eight digit number, plugs an eight digit number into a handheld uh, gun, which is about 30 years old. This is 30 some odd year old technology. That person then takes. Uh, the and I won't I won't bore you with the whole thing, but there's there's uh, five handoffs of those numbers, and every time there's a handoff, somebody's transcribing a number, so it, it's fraught with potential human error traps, right? So uh, we're looking at the way to eliminate those human error traps uh, and improve the improve the overall system, so there's not too many handoffs. So. The more that we can automate this, the better, because my experience has been the the challenge is always at the handoff. Right? So, but is this an old meter? Or is it old meter? Or is it been replaced? No, this is an old meter. Is it scheduled to be replaced in the project? Yeah, there, there, uh, yes. The, we have a we have a slide in here on the meter project. Yeah. So um, this year, typically we begin in about 800 meters a year. And we've done all the easy meters. Okay, so now we're down to, there's a, I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ray, but there's something like 800 meters left in the whole project. I, I could be wrong, but the, uh, the problematic one is what? One of those mine. The numbers in the report. Okay, yeah, I, I knew they put it in there. I, did. I don't remember the numbers. What I do remember the, uh, the, the problematic ones are the commercial industrials, and there's about 20 of those big big meters left to do. Uh, it's access, right, because on EV, we're having trouble getting into those. And also the customer, like Pfizer, in this case, is going to have to invest money changing valve out. So we're down to the, the hard ones to get at. Uh, but it is in the plan to change out, getting, convincing those customers that we need to do this uh, to make it an automated read uh, is, is the tricky part. Just one 30 year old thing. So if we sell the 30 year old gun, we do, but is it a new one? It, it's not the, it's not the reader that's making an error. It's the human running the, uh, the meter, the meter reader. Uh, George, the this specific meter is scheduled for replacement in August. Next okay. You, and you mentioned something about, like you said, it, it didn't affect the deduct meters. And I, I didn't understand what you meant by that. Correct. So you, I'm sure you're aware that so this customer has several deduct meters that come off their water consumption so that they don't get 
and no for sewer. And this particular meter is not one of them? This was specific to the water consumption and had nothing to do with the dock meters. Okay. Could you tell me we have an adjustment in the sewer? Could we just mention the finance? Altogether, it would be about a $590,000 government for sewer. I see, I, I'm oh. assuming that was the. Uh, So the total building correction in water, then you also have build, we also had a building correction in sewer. So the total water usage converts to a sewer bill. So it is actually, even though it wasn't. But not on the reading. Right, not on the deduct meters that deduct off that. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything else on this? Okay, electric bucket, truck, bid. Um, this is just a note that um, they are, or they just went out for bid for another bucket truck. I don't know, what have we been running on bucket trucks? About 275? Yeah, 275,000. Um, if you have any specific questions on that, it's just, it's out to bid. It should come through here next month for approval. Part of our fleet management plan. Mm -hmm. They're probably, probably well overdue, overdue for replacement. Do you, do you know what truck you're replacing? Offhand, I do not offhand. George, this is Randy. Hey, Randy. You'll you'll know which truck this is when I say it. Seventy two E. It's probably fifteen years old. Uh, it's, it's a two thousand four, I believe. So it's sixteen years old, going on seventeen. Uh, it was known as Old Reliable. They actually took it to the Virgin Islands and beat the. Uh, bleep bleep out of it and brought it back and put new tires on it. The last, maybe last three to four years, we changed uh, a bunch of the hydraulic hoses. Um, the rust is just starting to eat right through everything, wheel wells, et cetera. And uh, it's just, we, we, before it becomes a burden, we want to replace it. So, so it's been, it's been, a, it's been very reliable. Um, it's our big bucket, right? You know, as our big bucket, big reliable. So that's the one. Okay. Thank you. So that's out the bid now. Yes. Okay. Just went out October 6th. Yeah, it's due back October 6th. Okay. okay. Anything else on that? All right. I have something. This is this was presented to the council last week from a general this is from the state of Connecticut General Assembly official citation from Senator Kathy Austin, Representative Jay Martella, Representative Joe Delacruz. Representative Emmett Riley, Representative Christine Connolly, Representative Anthony Nolan, and Representative Kevin Ryan. Be it thereby known that all of the Connecticut General Assembly offers its sincerest congratulations to Grot. This says Grot Public Utilities, the Grot Utilities, in recognition of your outstanding efforts to help Connecticut recover from tropical storm as it is. We really appreciate your efforts in going above and beyond during this crisis. You should be proud of your business and your commitment to the community. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success. Given the 11th day of August 2020 at the State Capitol, Hartford, Connecticut, by signed by Martin Looney, President Pro Tem, Speaker of the House, uh, Secretary of State. So this was presented to Ron to the utility. We also have one from Senator Austin for Bosra Light and Power that was presented that night. And then we've invited Senator Austin to come to the Bosra Light and Power Utility Commission, uh, Mother Utility Commission, to uh, re represent the commission. And this is for, uh, if you remember, Senator Austin and others petitioned the governor to say, hey, look, you know, the, the privates are having some challenges, the publics are done, the, the public unions are done, can they help? And so we offer assistance in the local area. All right. Well, I tell you what, the, the, they come in, our team come in and, you know, they they got us back to power. Uh, Bowser took a little bit longer, but, you know, you got tons of trees, big trees up there. Uh, and once that was done, we helped the rest of the state. So, run utilities and budget 
power to the great shot. Is it okay if I speak on that, Mr. Mayor? This is Randy's. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Mark Byron and I were here uh, for a good part of it. Um, I can say that I, I spent about 30 hours here that week. In addition to the regular 40 hours, Vern Page was out for, uh, for surgery. Um, we've been down uh, two foremen for about three years, three, and four, three or four years. Um, it was it was quite the undertaking, I think. I think the guys did an amazing job. And so Groton was up in six and a half hours. We actually went a little over midnight that night. We didn't have nearly as much as Bosra. Bosra's all trees. Um, and so after the guys finished on a Tuesday night, they all came back in at 7 a.m. and we sent everybody up to, up to Bosra. And we left uh, maybe just a couple people down here to, to patrol and, to, and just tidy up stuff. Um, so... We finished in about three and a half days, around eight o'clock, nine o'clock. We finished a meal at the um, camp, uh, Lake Williams campground, and then the guys finished up. I think they had to replace two transformers and get power back on there, and they were they were wrapped up by 11 p.m. on Friday. Um, after during that day, uh, EverSource had been calling, asking, 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 and we said, "Well, when we're done here, well, we'll see how the guys are. We want them rested, obviously." Um, 7 a.m. Saturday, we sent five, five linemen to Eversource territory, and we asked them to keep them close just in case. We always have stragglers after the storm, so we asked them to keep them close in, around our territory. So we thought Mystic, Stonington, East Lyme, Waterford, and London, and they did for the most part. On uh, Tuesday, they sent them to Tolland or Will Willington or something like that, one of the crews, so two or three guys. Um, and then we had that night, <laughs> we had something happen at St. Thomas More, which was a, it's a private, it was private utilities, but we had about six pole uh, sections of wire come down inside St. Thomas More. So we couldn't get staff from here. So we ended up bringing those guys back and two or three of them worked through the night that night as well till about 7 a.m. the next day. So we finished our stuff and then we went and helped out Eversource. We, we and, uh, Norwich Public Utilities sent, uh, I think, all their crews, if, if not most of their crews, to Eversource territory as well. And I think that um, the congressperson that came in talked of that, that they saw Norwich Public Utilities and Groton Utilities trucks in their areas and hadn't seen Eversource for days. So they just the guys, I mean, they were tired. I mean, they were really tired after that. They were out for from Saturday to Tuesday evening and, and into, into Tuesday morning. So just the guys just did an amazing job. All the guys, all the staff, we had support from admin, customer service. One of the things I want to point out too is Water Division. Oh, Water Division was there the whole time and bothered with us as well. They had backhoes and big dump trucks and they were doing tree clearing, all that stuff. It was amazing. They did lights, they did backup, they did flagging, all that. It was awesome. And then customer service stayed through the night, a couple of nights to make sure that ACT did not take the calls. ACT is not grot utilities. So they don't have the same connection with our customers. They were able to, to triage the calls and hold them so that the guys could get their rest throughout the night. So in the past, I think what we had done is we'd sent out the troublemen. So the troublemen's out all night putting out minor issues that didn't necessarily have to come through. And this time they were stopped and we addressed them in the morning at 7 a.m. So I think that the whole thing, I think we just we commended. So those, those um, citations definitely deliver uh, the appreciation that I think the guys need to hear and see. Thank you. Thank you. In addition to that, another thing that's going to come out of this, we're going to do a PSA on power outages. Basically, we're going to break it down into what happens before the storm, what happens during the storm, and what happens during the recovery. We'll take it as an opportunity to, to educate people on the kinds of things that we do, the maintenance that we do, the tree cutting campaign that we have that we do before the storm. We're going to let them know that actually during the storm, the reason they may not see trucks is because we can't put people up in, up in the truck if, you, if you're above a certain 30. If you're above 30 knots, 30 miles per hour. So if you're above 30 miles an hour, you can't put them up in a bucket because it's a safety hazard. And then we go through, but I've met with uh, uh, Dan and Vern and uh, they're working on a 
find a script and then they're going to uh, do a PSA and we'll get it put out. So that's another good thing to, to let people know what's going on. Because a lot of people, they don't get it. They know that the storm rocks are powered and then the storm's over, why the power out? Right? And so this is an opportunity to educate them. All right. So let's move on to action items. Could, could I mention one thing here? Sure, please. So uh, I don't want to be a killjoy. It sounds like I'm being a killjoy after that nice talk about storm recovery. But this morning uh, in the National Hurricane Center, I just want to draw your attention that yeah. there are three hurricanes, one tropical storm, and three tropical depressions in the Atlantic Basin right now, as we are speaking. Excellent. Yeah. So, <laughs> First time since 1960. Right. So we need to be on our toes. Aren't we lucky? We're lucky. It is 2020. <laughs> yes. When we look back at 2020 hindsight, it's going to be a different view, I think. I think it's going to be just blacked out. We will see how you. Well, anything else? I'm sorry. Two short sure time. Both of us have a close early on. Understand. So I think they have a form. We do. Yeah. We'll still have a form if you need to leave. So we'll move on to action items. I need a motion for GUC WPCA 20-09-34. Consideration of an action to authorize this capital project for $419,650 in their steps, including 10% contingency to be funded from the 2016 electric bond fund for the engineering the design and project management for the Rodnome 1410, 1280, and 400 transmission lines. Required upgrades and furthermore, the city council be appraised for this action with the recommendation that it concur. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. Well, this is, yeah, this is for the transmission uh, lines, the upper source, the ISO issue that we've been talking about. We're going to get this started out of the 20, 2016 bond funds. One of the challenges that with the COVID that we're facing, and I just talked to Ron Yoss this week about where we need to go with this, is that the bond council is still down. So, okay, never mind. So, what we're looking at is we have two bonds that we really do need to move. This is one of them, and one for BLP needs to be moved. The one for the municipal building, I'm debating on how urgent that is. As much as I would like to get it done, I'm trying to figure that out. Ron and I are talking about whether or not we want to go the route of just having the council approve it instead of going to the Freeman's meeting and the public hearing and those kind of things. Uh, I'm, we're, I have not reached a decision. I'm still talking to, to Ron and Ron to see where we want to go, but what we're going to do initially to get this started with the engineering, we're going to go to the 2016 bond fund, use those funds, and then we'll, we'll do, use the new binding for the actual work. So that's just so that you know what we're going to do. Right. We, we're basically up against the wall to get the design moving on this. So uh, remembering that we had money for replacement of holes in the 2016 bond authorization. We had the project group go back, look at how much money we did not spend replacing poles that we knew may have the replacement spec increased by this project. So instead of replacing poles then, and then replacing them again now with this project, we just stopped and we didn't use that money so we found that there's about this amount of money in that project, which gets us into the beginning of the design of the transmission project. So we're just looking for authorization, not the authorization on the bonding, just the authorization to approve a project with funds that we already have approved <clears throat> to kick off the big project. Remember, this is a kickoff for $2.2 million back. Right. And this will get us to basically final design point on the 1410-1280 and plus and be able to get to the siting council for approval working with uh, uh, CMEC and Eversoft with the MOU that we signed to before. So. Okay, good. Any other discussion on this one? Hearing none. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, George. Um, 
Environmental engineering. I'm sure there's going to be. Is that the, included in here? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is that the other engineering? Fifty uh, thousand. Uh, or is it included in the other? It's included in both the Clo eighty and Clo and mine. So. Um, it's VHV. So who's doing this engineering work? Is it going to be in house, or is it going? No, 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 no. It's going out. Yeah. Oh. This, this, we're using the you know the agreement from the MOU was so a preferred vendor. Yeah. It's, DHI. It's, Layers in BHP working. That's who's doing the work. Doing the ever so ever so Right. Okay. Sorry. And, and a lot of these design POs have been cut by CMAC, and CMAC builds us for transmission work just through our CMAC transmission bill. So um, some of this is being paid via CMAC. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Some of this four hundred nineteen thousand. Yes. CMAC cut the PO to the engineers. But these lines don't belong to CMAC, they belong to us. They're ours, but they are our representative for all our trans for our project. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extension motion carries. We need a motion for GUC WPCA 20 9 35 consideration of an action to authorize Ground Utilities Management to purchase one new mixing pump from Bond Company 364 Monte Alamo Road in Santa, Washington, as a sole source supplier to replace the unreliable mixing pump located in the Jester Building, a devolution of Bayman facility for an amount not to exceed $15,800 of the cents. An additional $4,200 for contingency, piping and project management to be paid from available cash in the sewer division budget as a non bonded capital purchase. And furthermore, the city council be apprised of this action with the recommendation that they concur. So, uh, we have a motion. Uh, and a second. And a motion is second. Discussion. Ray, would you like to carry this one? Okay. Well, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, yes, this is, uh, we have an old piston pump down at the, on the digester, so we want to, obviously, it's not very reliable. We've been working on it, so this one will help us in our mixing in case our first mixing pump goes down. So this will be a uh, backup. And, yeah, when we clean, and we're also putting piping in, Along with that, uh, for our, when we clean the digester, we can hook up to this pump, pump to help us pump out the digester instead of open up the hatch like we used to do and let all the odors out. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Extension motion carries. Uh, need a motion for GUC WPCA 20 9 36 consideration of an action authorized route utilities and management to issue a purchase order with tide tails, water, and wastewater supplies. 36 Hudson Road, Route 27, Sudbury, Massachusetts, for the purchase of replacement commercial and residential meters and associated parts and equipment as part of the water division's advanced metering infrastructure meter replacement project. In the amount of $201,750 in cents, the paid for the fund available in the approved 2016 water fund bond. And furthermore, the city council be apprised of this action and the recommendation that they concur. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? Um, this is a project you heard referred to earlier to finish out the Neptune replacement. Ray, do you want to do this one too? Hey, this is the continuation, and this will uh, use up all the bond money for this project. Uh, this will continue our meter change out. Uh, as you see on the list, most of the meters are the bigger ones, so that's what this is going for. Uh, because of all the customers that we have with the bigger meters, uh, we just own the meter, so the pits and the valves, uh, some of the work has to be done by the customer. That's why it's been a slow go with the bigger meters. So 
So this will get us to this phase, but it won't, this will not complete us, right? No, we probably have another two years there if we're at the rate we're going, because as you see on the chart, uh, we've been dropping off quickly. Well, this year has been COVID. We stopped the operation from going into people's houses. But now uh, the harder ones, uh, the Pfizer DB is uh, a big one because we have access issues in there and uh, with a lot of the cust uh, commercial customers. So uh, that, that's, our, that's part of our issues. And then the, the next bond will, will be, some of that money will be used for the, the completion of this? We either looked at, at one of our budget meetings when we were doing our budget, it's either going to be a bond or it will be just out of cash. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. The motion for GDC to the PCA 20 9 37. Consideration of an action to authorize run utilities management. Pay for the services of Phoenix Environmental Laboratories Incorporated, 587 East Middle Turnpike, in Manchester, Connecticut, for the polychlorinated by federal PCB laboratory testing that was not included in the scope of services for environmental partners to address current water filtration PCB remediation for amount not to exceed $90,648.00 in cents as a non budgeted item to be paid for correction to be paid from retaining earnings in the approved fiscal year 2021 water budget. And furthermore, the city council be apprised of this action with the recommendation that it concur. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? So uh, we, uh, as part of the, the PCB remediation uh, over at the new water treatment plant, we have the big soil pile plus uh, uh, some additional sampling in the water treatment plant. Uh, the EPA administrator um, asked us, uh, you know, over a several week period that to go back and get more samples and more samples and more samples. So we kind of got ahead of ourselves here. And, uh, you know, what we thought was just a, a few thousand dollars originally, probably $20,000, it would come through and we'd go back after later if there is a, some legal action down the road, um, you know, it, we wound up spending more money than we anticipated on that sample. But uh, so that's that's what happened here. We would have had to do the sampling anyway, and it saved us, you know, more than three hundred thousand dollars on the pile. Um, but the way the process went, uh, we got ahead of ourselves. So sorry. And this is what not put it in the scope. Uh, is that our error? Or no, no the, the scope kept changing. Oh, every, every time we went back to her with sample results, she said, well, I, I need more samples. Go, go sample this now and sample it this way. And oh, by the way, I want you to use a different sampling methodology, right? Cost one of them. You know, the grid, the grid pattern changed. The grid pattern change, the protocol. Yeah. yeah we, we, I mean, and, and, you know, again, I don't want to make Ray's head any bigger than it is already, but I mean, they, he and Paul Munez and Mike Weber did a great job working with Kim Tisa to get us to the point where we are today, where yeah. we're not shipping that pile off for millions of dollars. So. Nope, that's good. All right, any other discussion on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extension motion carried. The motion for GUC WPCA 20 9 38. Consideration of an action authorized ground utilities management to approve change for number 19. Large White Construction Company Incorporated, 41 Central Street, Auburn, Massachusetts, which includes a credit and revisions to the existing plan as part of the State Connecticut Drinking Water State Revolving Fund. PWSRF, project number 2013-0140, in an amount not to exceed $83,639.88. And furthermore, the city council be apprised of this action with a recommendation that they concur 
that Mayor Keith Edwards be authorized to execute the change order number 19 upon final approval of the City of Connecticut Department of Public Health. So moved. Second. Can we have a motion and a second discussion? Who wants to? Um, I, Ray can speak to this, but this is um, it's almost standard at this point. Every meeting we've been having a small change order that has ads and subtracts uh, <laughs> of the large project scope. Um, there is a detail of the contingency left in the package, and there, there are details of exactly line item by line item what they're adding and subtracting. Uh, if you have a, don't have a specific question, I might. Or, or if you want Ray to talk, that's okay. Either or. So we still have some contingency. When are they supposed to turn over plant? That's was it going to be done? Uh, I think the contract date, and contract, correct me if I'm wrong, is like January 10th ish for the end date on the contract. Okay. So we still have some that you never know what's going to happen between now. Now, what about the there's that report in there that says how many days they were scheduled to be there and how many days they have been there? Is that been extended? Because it looks like there's only 27 days left. Stantec? Mm -hmm. uh, talking about Stantec? You're talking about Stantec? You're talking about Rice West. Oh, I mean, is that Stantec uh, that was? Going to be there a thousand days? Well, the original construction contract had a term of certain days that was extended by change orders. Stantec's contract has not been changed as of yet. Okay. So that, well, I'm not going to go too funny because it's really not that important. I mean, it just was uh, curious if we were running out of time on the contract you know because of all the delays and things that the because wasn't it originally they were uh, supposed to be done in september october yes through the change order process there was extension that brought it to basically january, to january now. um it should have been done right about now yeah that's what i, mm -hmm. I thought Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Most expensive motion carried. Okay, we have no executive session. There's some, the next thing is strategic planning. Before we go into that, would you guys like a break? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was going to also. Uh, what, do you, what do you want to do, Rob? Um, I'm going to ask because we, we lost Jeff. Um, what we did is we whittled the strategic planning down to a very a short summary. And what we wanted to do with the commission is next steps with the commission is specifically work on commission-based goals. So what we have included are the core values, a summary of where we stand, the draft final version of that. We have strategic priorities with goals that are very draft and there's gonna be more added over the next four weeks to that. And then we were going to work on proposed uh, commission level goals, but I'm concerned that um, I don't I don't want to drag it out longer, and I don't necessarily want to do it without a commissioner. Okay. So we we can, um, with this being passed out, have it as a homework assignment. We could do it separately. We can talk about it next month. I wanted to leave it open with you, and I didn't want to because we do have a commitment to everybody. We didn't want to go more really two hours but we've had a lot of yeah we have a lot of pent up stuff because we've been trying to keep the meeting short and doing strategic and we hit this month with a bunch of stuff so it's your call really if, if, if the commission wants to uh, uh, discuss this at the next meeting we can just i just won't open it up i just we won't we won't even talk about it we'll get i'll get in the way and put it on a Schedule for next month, and we'll talk about it next month. But that's what you guys want to do. That way, Commissioner Valley can be, to give us some more time to look at it, and Commissioner Valley can be here. And additionally, everybody can talk about it singularly, a call and ask for advice or thoughts that staff might have. Uh, so we could almost do it as a homework assignment on the side and then 
pull it all together in the discussion next time. Uh, we, you have a short, you said you have a short version? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's page yeah, it's 59, 59, 60, 59? and 61. Oh, that's good. Okay. Just go right to the bottom and just it's the engineer's version. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're okay. Next month. Okay. All right. Then what we're going to do is we'll, we'll put this off for next month. Uh, and then we will not discuss strategic planning. Okay. And with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion and a second, we are adjourned. Thank you all for coming out. Staff, thank you very much for everything that you do. Naomi, I love the page Naomi. reference. Yeah. Um, Where did it come from? Hey, I love that. <laughs> Um, one of one of the commission level strategic goals.